Okay. Okay, so the uh, sixth malacha on Shabbos is a malacha of winnowing. After the produce has been harvested, it needs to be processed. And there are a few stages in, in the way wheat is processed. Although in the construction of the Mishkan, there was no wheat, yet uh, according to most opinions, there was a um, there was a need to um, to um, in order to produce the spices that were used to dye the curtains in the temple. Uh, there were other um, uh, samamanim, other different kinds of uh, uh, herbs that had a similar process to that of wheat. So regarding wheat, there, there is, first of all, a need to do what is called dash, one of the last few lessons about threshing the uh, husks of wheat to allow the kernels of wheat to come out of the husks. But after the kernels come out of the husks, they're still not finished because the kernels are now on the, uh, on the ground and they are uh, uh, mixed together with, with the husks. So in order to separate the husks from the uh, kernels, what they, what they did was they would take a shovel and they would throw the, when they waited for a strong wind, and they would throw the, uh, the uh, husks and the kernels in the air. And this would separate the husks from the kernels. And they then would take all the, the, the husks took up um, more space and they weighed lighter, they, they weighed less than the kernels. The kernels, kernels took up less space and weighed more. So when they threw the husks and the kernels into the air, the, um, the kernels would fall in their place while the husks would fall farther away. Nowadays, it's all done in one process in the a machine called the like, combine, I think. Um, but there is also, this machine does all this, these processes at once. But after you now have the kernels, you're still not done because the kernels may have been divided in general from the husks, but the kernels are on the floor. So they're still mixed in with some stones and there's still some of the husks that are still mixed together. So you have to take all of the kernels and put them out on the table and take the stones and the remaining husks out of the, out of the kernels. That is called beider. That's the seventh malach. After you take all of the, uh, all of the stones and whatever husks remain out of the kernels, you put all these kernels together into a keli, into a vessel, and then you then you uh, grind the kernels to produce the flour. When you grind the kernels, so in the kernels of wheat themselves, the different parts, there is the shell, the outermost part of the kernel, and there is the inner part of the kernel. So people who today like to eat uh, whole wheat bread, so they take the, all of the, uh, the uh, uh, flour, the, both the kernel that was grinded together with the shell, even after they're grinded, there's still a, a noticeable difference between the kernel part and the shell part. The shell part is a little thicker and the kernel that is now ground is thinner. So if you want to specifically have the white flour, so you take the entire uh, grinded mixture and you put it into a zippala, you put it into a, uh, a, a, a sieve to separate between the thicker uh, husks, uh, thick, thicker shells, and the uh, inner kernels of wheat, and um, which are all ground, but still, again, the, the shells of, of the wheat are thicker than the inner kernels, even after the ground. So if you want to divide the inner kernels from the shells, you put them into this, into, into this, uh, into this sieve, and there's holes in the sieve, and so the the uh, there are very tiny holes. So only a fine flour comes out of the um, comes out, and the remaining uh, husks or shells of whatever it's called in, in English, I'm not sure, 
the, the outer part of the kernels remains on top. That is the malacha of, um, of Merakid. So the Gemara says that it seems that all of these three processes of, of separation are all the same. Gemara says, hai no beder, hai no zeda, hai no whether you're throwing the husks in the air to separate the uh, husks from the kernels, or whether you are taking the stones out of the kernels, or whether you're taking the shells um, uh, through the sieve away from the fine flour uh, through the sieve, it's, it's all the same process of separation. So why they all count as, as three distinct malachas, three, these are three of the three malachas, seemingly they're all the same process of separation. So the Quran asks this question, where it answers, Abai Rav Damitavayu, Abai Rav answer that Kol Davosh Haibim Mishkan, everything that was done in the Mishkan, even though that there are things that are similar to it, whatever was done in the Mishkan is counted as a separate malach. So although they are very similar, but whatever was done in the Mishkan is counted as a separate malach. It says these were all done in the process of creating the uh, samamonim, creating the uh, spices, the herbs, therefore they're counted as separate malachas. There is a distinction between them, uh, as we shall see. Beirer is separating with your hands. Zere is separating with wind. And Mirakeid is separating with a vessel using a sieve. So that's what the Gemara Bavli, that's what the Babylonian Talmud says, that Beirer, Zere, Mirakeid, they're all doing the same function of separation. But the Gemara Yerushalmi had a different take on what, of what Zaira is about, about what winnowing is about. The Gemara Yerushalmi says, if someone would spit into the air, the air, the, the, the wind causes his spit to the, divide in all different kinds of particles. So the Gemara says that it's forbidden to spit into the air on Shabbos because the, the wind will cause everything to be separated into different pieces. Now, even though you're not, when you're spitting in the air, you're not causing any two objects to be separated, not like in an example of Zera, where you're separating the kernels from the husks, still the Gemara Yerushalmi interprets the Malach of Zera, it's not about separating bad from good, rather just the, pro the process of, of separating anything, even one item into different particles through the wind, separating through the wind. That's what Gemara Yerushalmi says. If you separate through the wind, uh, even though you're not causing a separation of two distinct items, it's one thing, the spit, still the Gemara Yerushalmi says that is considered a malacha of, of Zayda. And that's also the halacha, the Alt Rebbe says clearly in Simen Shin Yotesif Chavtes, he says that you are chay, that means it's a biblical prohibition, you're not allowed to spit into the air. That's what Alter says in the laws of, um, of Shabbos. And the laws of Pesach were written before the laws of Shabbos, and there is, there is a, some discrepancies, perhaps, between the laws of Shabbos and the laws of Pesach. And in general, we go by the final ruling of the Alter Rebbe. However, it's not really clear what is called the final ruling, because the Alter Rebbe did go back and again edit the laws of of Pesach. So, that, so in general, although we say that the Alt Rebbe's final rulings are his final decision, it's not really possible to know in the laws of Shabbos and laws of Pesach what was actually the final ruling. But th there isn't, isn't really um, a nafkamina, there isn't really a halachic difference between uh, the laws of Shabbos and laws of Pesach, but there is a different phraseology that the Alt Rebbe uses laws of, uh, laws of uh, Pesach. Alteber says in Simen Tov Mem Vav that if somebody finds chametz on Pesach, on its yontif, and you want to get rid of the chametz, what should you do? So there are two ways to fulfill the myths of destroying the chametz. One way is burning the chametz, and the other way is to uh, to take the chametz and to and to and to uh, grind it up and throw it in the wind. 
And both are equally kosher when it comes to destroying the chametz. But now it's yantif. And the question is, what do you do? You have chametz in your house, what do you do? So the Alter Rebbe says that there is an issue with throwing the chametz into the wind. Because of Zaira, it's considered Zaira, it's considered you're separating through wind, you're destroying through wind, it's, it's in the category of Zaira. But then he says that there are those who say that it's not an issue, and those who say that it is an issue. It's a machlaikas. It doesn't, doesn't say it the same way he says in the laws of Shabbos, where he says clearly this is forbidden, and this is biblically forbidden. Laws of Pesach, he says there's two opinions. We have to be stripped according to both opinions. How are we stripped according to both opinions? You can't burn the chametz. Why not? You're allowed to make a fire on Yantif to burn something, which you need to burn on Yantif. Do you really need to burn the chametz? Well, if there's no other option other than uh, to destroy the chametz, other than burning the chametz, then you will be allowed to burn the chametz. But, in the, but since there's an opinion which says you could throw the chametz into the air, you could, you could mash it up and throw it in the air. So since there is an alternative of getting rid of the chametz without burning the chametz, therefore you're not allowed to burn the chametz because you're only allowed to burn something when you need to burn. So if you say it's forbidden to throw it into the air, so then you have no alternative, then should be, you should be allowed to burn the chametz. But since there's an opinion which says that's forbidden, Therefore, you're not allowed to um, uh, burn it or throw it in the air. Instead, you're supposed to just uh, uh, you're supposed to uh, put it aside until you're able to burn it after the holiday part of Pesach and burn it in Cholomite. But you cannot um, uh, destroy it or even ask a non-Jew to destroy it with, uh, with Zaira by, by throwing the chametz into the air because it may be biblically forbidden to do Zayra. And therefore, you cannot say that there is no alternative other than burning the chametz because there's an opinion which says you're allowed to throw it in the air. And you can't throw it in the air because opinion which says that it's biblically forbidden to throw it in the air. And therefore, um, the Altarist says to be strict, strict according to both opinions, and therefore you are not allowed to um, destroy the chametz or ask a non destroy the chametz as well. So what comes out from all this is that we have to be strict according to both opinions. The opinion which says that it is the Kondagmar Yerushalmi, which says that spitting is considered zera, And the other opinion, the, the, Bab, the Bavli, which says that zera is about Beira. The Gemara Bavli, as the author writes in Kuntras Achrin, in Simon Tafnam Vav, that uh, Alter Bird is interesting. He says, I qu- he quotes something that we don't have in our Shulchan Aruch in Simon Shin Yutes. It could be there's many things in Alter Bird Shulchan Aruch which were burned that we don't have. So it's possible this is one of the things that was burned. This could be that there is a Kuntra Sachem in Simon Shin Yutes that we don't have. The Alter Bird says, I, uh, that I said in Simon Shin Yutes, that the Gemara Bavli seems to disagree with the Gemara Yerushalmi. The Gemara Yerushalmi says that Zaira means to. Uh, just throw to spit in the air, but the Gemara Bavli says that Boerer, Merakin, and Zayr are all the same kind of thing. It's all about separation. So the, the, it seems like the Gemara Bavli disagrees with the Gemara Yerushalmi. So the Alter Rebbe practically rules like both opinions and says you're not allowed to spit into the air and you're not allowed to um, destroy the Chametz on Pesach uh, with Zayr by throwing it into the air either. And but because of the other opinion, which says you could throw it into the air, therefore you don't have to burn it, and therefore you can't, you can't burn it either. Not, not considered a need on Yante that could only be satisfied by burning, and therefore you can't burn the Chametz either on, on, on pace on Yante. You have to wait till after Yante. But this doesn't really seem pertinent to us. However, we shall see that there are many halachas, many halacha ramifications that are very practical because of the Malach of Zer. There is a um, story, story of Rabbi Kiva Eger. Kiva Eger says he was a Rav in uh, poison. Before he was in poison, he was in Lisa. And he says an interesting event that happened to him. He was once walking to Shul and he saw a guy who was holding this cup of water and he was standing on the second story of the building. 
And from the second story of the building, he was pouring uh, something down from the second story, he's pouring water into, uh, into the air. And there was no problem of carrying on Shabbos because the whole area of the synagogue was surrounded by an Eruv. But Reb Kiv Eger said, Ola Belibi, I thought to myself that perhaps according to the Gemara Yerushalmi, he's pouring water in the air and the wind is causing the water to be scattered around. Perhaps this is considered to be Zaira according to the Gemara Yerushalmi. And Reb Kiv Eger goes into the whole discussion about perhaps you might say that since this water um, was spilled by a person and therefore it's not considered the same status, uh, it seems that Zaira winnowing only applies to things that come from the earth, Duli Karka, but um, it's clear from the Alter Rebbe that even if it's not Duli Karka, there will be an issue. And um, the, so regarding practically, uh, halach ramification of this would be uh, regarding the game of blowing bubbles. People uh, often uh, have their children play this game where they take a, a, a soap and they mix it with water and they this plastic, round plastic into the water and the kids blow the bubbles out of the plastic. So I like to play that game on Shabbos. So it seems like, according to Gemara Yerushalmi, since when you blow the bubbles into the air and the wind causes the water to the bubbles to, to move around. So that would be an issue on Shabbos to blow bubbles. There is another issue with blowing bubbles according to not, other posts can discuss that you're creating a new entity, you're creating bubbles and not, not just water, but leaving that issue aside, there will be another issue it seems uh, according to the Moshe and that is that you are doing zayra. You're uh, causing the, the, the uh, water to be scattered all over the place through the wind. There is a, another issue and that is forget about the wind, are you allowed to blow with your mouth to separate things? So the Alter Rebbe says in the laws of Hilch Zeras Shabbat in the Siddur, final ruling of the Alter Rebbe and the laws of Shabbos, he mentions many stringencies there. And one of them is, he says that if a fly falls in your soup, you should not blow the fly out of the bowl. He says you can blow the fly to the end of the bowl, but then you have to spill the fly out of the bowl. Why can't you blow it out of the bowl? He doesn't say why, but it seems clear the reason why I can't blow the fly out of the bowl is because of Zayda. You're not allowed to use your breath to cause a separation of the, um, of the fly from, from the bowl. And in a similar way, um, the Aruch uh, writes, Nafchubipiv Zeu Zayda. The, the, he says it clearly that blowing with your mouth is considered the same as using the wind. And that's what the Rebbein Hananel says, and that's what the Alter Rebbe says. Uh, the question, though, is, that's what they say. The question is that this seems, what they're saying is a direct contradiction to the Gemara, to Gemara Bavli, Gemara Beitza. Dafyu Beis, it says over there in Gemara Beitza that if somebody has... Uh, separated the husks of, of legumes, of beans before Shabbos, and now that's still mixed up together, he's peeled them, but they're mixed together on Shabbos, and the Gemara discusses about various ways of, of uh, separating them. The Gemara says that which means you hold them in your hands and you blow the husks off of the uh, kernels, which seems to be directly a direct contradiction to what the Alter says. You're not allowed to blow the Eretz and Gemara, you are allowed to blow. So it's very interesting that the Alter Rebbe, when he talks about this halacha, he changes from the word yinapeach, which is an argumara, which means to blow. And he says, instead of the word yinapeach, he says yinape, which difference between yinapeach and yinape is yinapeach means to blow. Yinape means to sift. So the Alter Rebbe says that the Gemara is not discussing blowing. Blowing is for sure forbidden, as the, as the Aruch says. The or the Aruch says that blowing with your mouth is considered in the category of zera, and when it says in the Gemara that yinape miyad liyad is not talking about blowing with your mouth. That's forbidden according to the Aruch. Rather, it's talking about it's not talking about yinape. It's not talking about blowing with your lips. Rather, it's talking about shaking things with your hand, hands and causing it to separate it that way. 
But the question is, where does Alta get this from? This is not a, a one of the girsas in the Gemara that we have. There's not one of the texts in the Gemara that are extant. The Diktuke Sefrim, which writes all different texts in the Gemara, does not have two texts of this Gemara and Beitza. But it seems very clear that the Alta Rebbe had this other text. The Alta Rebbe does say in the laws of Yantif. The laws of Yantif are a little more lenient than the laws of Shabbos when it comes to the issue of Zera. And that's because on Yantif, you're allowed to do any malacha for the sake of food. Uh, and so therefore, Zera, which is separating the husks from the, the kernels, is, is part of the process of making food. However, there is a rabbinic prohibition of doing various malachas on Yantif that would that are normally done when you want to create a large quantity of food. And the reason the Chacham forbade us to do that on Yantif is because they didn't want us to delay working to Yantif, and therefore we'd be busy all Yantif just doing malacha. And therefore the Chacham said that, that we're not allowed to um, do a lot of Zaira on Yantif, you only want to do what you need right away, and a lot of restrictions, although biblically, the Minatayra, there wouldn't be an issue of separating through the process of Zaira, but still the, uh, the Chachamim said not to do this because of, uh, of Uv and the Choyl, because it's something that you do during the weekday, and because it will keep, keep a person might delay things to Yantiv. They say, oh, I have, I have the whole Yantiv to do things, and therefore Chachamim forbade us to do um, extensive Zaira on Yantiv. However, regarding the laws of Zayda on Yantiv, in the same halacha, the same scenario where the guy has these, 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 uh, um, these kidneys, he has the beans and they're, and they're shavitim and they're separated, but they're not separated, he wants to separate them. The Alter Rebbe says there, it's, if it's mixed together, you could blow on Yantiv. So why, why do you say you could blow? Where does that come from? So the Alter Rebbe, is using the leniency of the opinions which disagree with the Gemara Yerushalmi and say that you're allowed to blow in regards to the laws of Yantav. Since in regards to the laws of Yantav anyways, it's only a rabbinical prohibition. So the Alter Rebbe says that we're allowed to rely on this opinion regarding Yantav to allow us to blow, to separate the legumes from their, from their husks. But that's only regards to the laws of Yantiv. And the source of the Alt Rebbe is from the Aruch. The Aruch says in the Erech of, of Inape, he says he his text in Gemara is, he brings both opinions, but he says, My opinion is that a correct text is not that you're allowed to blow to separate on Shabbos, rather, you're only allowed to shake the vessel which has the husks in it, but not to blow. That's clearly forbidden according to the Yushalmi. That's that's Zayda. So bottom line is that. There, and the author says it clearly in Sim Tafkaf Yud, Siv Beis, he says clearly, he says, he says there, Lenapeach, he says you're allowed to blow. And guarding the laws of Shabbos, he says don't blow. Guarding the laws of Yantav, he says to blow. It's clear that the, that the difference between the hay and the Ches and the Alter B'Shoch Marach is not a mistake in the print, but it's very deliberate. Laws of Shabbos have one distinction, and laws of Yantav have another distinction. That's why on Shabbos, he says that. Since a biblical prohibition, we should be strict like the Gemara Yerushalmi and not use your breath to separate things. But in laws of Yantiv, which is more lenient, he says you're allowed to. Okay, just a few more um, practical halachas that are affected by the laws of Zera. Number one, uh, it's no, there's no problem really to use a faucet, which has many holes. That's not Zera, just because it's coming diff many different, different uh, uh, directions out of the faucet, it's not, it's not because of the wind, no issue there. Um, but it seems that there would be an issue to use a toy gun to shoot water in the air and to dust, to blow dust off of a book or to blow dust, to blow confectionery sugar off of a cookie. Um, and it seems that there would be no issue to a cold vaporizer to put the uh, vaporizer back on, it's it's not you're not using the wind to separate um, the uh, particles, the part the separation of the water into vapor is not because of zero, it's not because of the wind. So therefore, that those things would be okay. And Amisha Feinstein also writes that regarding the laws of of aerosol cans of of air freshener, 
they wouldn't be an issue either because of the way the function of the of the the, the aerosol cans are made is in a way that they're not, they're not using wind at all. However, uh, spray paint and cans that are using um, I think it's called the uh, the Venry method. Basically, it's a, scientifically there is a way to use the um, the pressure, the lower of the lower, the lower air pressure and the wind to be able to produce the uh, spray paint. And that uses that's a different mechanism. And any other spray can that uses that mechanism, which 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 uh, involves uh, the wind, that would be prohibited to use on um, on Shabbos. A similar thing that would be an issue uh, to take the uh, tablecloth and to spread it out into the wind would be a problem on Shabbos. And perhaps it might be an issue to use your hands to create a wind and to cause. With it, with the um, take the tablecloth and to take the crumbs on it and to spread and to and to shake it out, you're causing also wind with your hands, and that may be an issue as well. Um, or to take paper and throw the papers in the wind to separate them. On Shabbos, um, there is many games that are many pieces in them, and people want to play these games on Shabbos. They don't want to separate them, so they throw all, all the pieces around so that there shouldn't be an issue of separating them. But you have to be careful not to throw them into the air, and that would also because that would run into the issue again. Of um, of Zayr. Okay, I think that basically covers what I want to discuss tonight. Have a wonderful night. Zayg isn't.